chapter 10, the header. The holy endowment is introduced and explained. Moroni uses the account of the presentation of the endowment given to Adam and Eve by Jehovah. The first token of the Aaronic priesthood is introduced and explained. 1. And now, I am constrained by the Spirit to explain further some of the things that the Lord suffereth to be given to the children of men, that they might be kept in remembrance of him, that they might always remember him and keep his commandments which he hath given unto them, so that the Holy Ghost may always be with them during the course of the days of their probation. 2. And many of these things are taught unto the people symbolically through the administrations of the holy priesthood that hath been established in the churches that he hath suffered to be built up among the children of men. 3. And many of these things are taught in the temples of the Lord, as they are called by the church, and are the basis of an endowment of great understanding and teaching unto the children of men. 4. Behold, the Lord showed this endowment unto Adam and his posterity, and commanded them to teach their children this sacred ordinance as a way to keep them in remembrance of him. 5. And this endowment was given unto many of the prophets of God, to give unto the people a symbolic representation of the plan of salvation, and also to teach them many of the truths that the Father revealed unto his children in his kingdom, before he placed them in the world that he had created for them. 6. And this endowment was given unto Nephi, who passed it down from generation to generation, and it was taught in the temples that he caused to be built among his people. 7. And it was a cause of exceeding joy to the people of Nephi, that they had the opportunity to go to a temple dedicated to the teachings and instructions of the Lord. 8. And at this time, or during the time of the reign of Nephi, there was none that was prohibited from partaking of the ordinance of the endowment, it being taught to the people symbolically with signs, tokens, penalties, and symbols that no one could understand unless he was given this knowledge and understanding by the gift of the Holy Ghost, which gift was only given to those who were righteous. 9. And it was the purpose of Nephi and his brothers, who were anointed high priests, to teach the people the words of Christ, that all people should be allowed to have the endowment presented before them, thus with the hope that they might be encouraged to seek an understanding of the mysteries of God. 10. And in its purity, this holy endowment is a perfect representation of the plan of salvation and giveth the children of men all the understanding that they need in order to work out their own salvation before the Lord. 11. Now I, Moroni, have seen the church of God established in the last days, and have seen the re-establishment of these holy endowment, and the construction of many temples dedicated to the purpose of giving the children of men the opportunity to receive the endowment, that they might also be encouraged to seek out its meaning and abide by the principles taught therein. 12. And I have seen that this endowment was revealed in its pure form, which form had been previously adulterated by the precepts and learning of men which learning was not based upon the gospel of Jesus Christ, but upon the precepts of men. 13. And the same prophet, seer, and revelator who shall bring this record to the world, shall also be given this endowment in its pure form, as it was in the beginning. And he shall set up a school of learning, in which this endowment shall be presented to the people, like it was in the time of Nephi, and Jacob, and Joseph, his brothers. 14. And it shall come to pass that the people of the church that he shall establish shall reject the pure message of the gospel of Jesus Christ, and be given lower laws of sacrifice and ordinances, like unto the children of Israel when they desired that Moses be their leader. 15. And because of the wickedness of this church, this prophet shall be taken from among them. And because he is taken from among them, they are left to themselves to establish a church according to the dictates of their own conscience, which dictates are not based upon the words of Christ, as I have explained them in this record. 16. And because the church is named after the name of Jesus Christ, 
and not in his name, or in other words, based upon his gospel, this holy endowment shall be changed and modified according to the desires and precepts of the leaders of this church, who do so because of the praise of the world. 17. And my soul is burdened exceedingly as I read the words of the brother of Jared, who hath seen the coming forth of this church among the Gentiles. Yea, even the very same church which shall preach the words of the record of my father, and also many of my own words, and carry them forth to many parts of the world. 18. For behold, it shall come to pass that this church shall begin to deny the children of God from partaking of this holy ordinance, and few will be given the opportunity to be encouraged by its wonderful teachings and the hidden messages of its extraordinary symbolism. 19. And of those that do receive this endowment, few will understand its meaning because of the many changes that have been done to it, because of the misunderstanding and wickedness of the leaders of the church that is called after the name of Jesus Christ. 20. Behold, in their pride they shall believe that if a person doth not abide by the commandments of the church, then he will not be allowed to behold this holy endowment which is a blessing from God unto all of his children. 21. Yea, there shall be found among them those who follow the words of Christ and obey them with a broken heart and a contrite spirit. Nevertheless, because they do not obey the commandments of the church and its leaders, which commandments are not the words of Christ, but the precepts of men, they are not allowed to enter into the temples which have been dedicated to the Lord for the edification and perfection of his children. 22. And it is for this reason that the Spirit hath commanded me to explain these things in this part of my record. And according to the commandment that I have been given, I will explain this holy endowment in its pure form, giving all the signs, tokens and penalties and all of its symbolism and also an explanation of all of these things. 23. And these things shall reveal many of the things that the brother of Jared saw in his vision and of which he wrote and the majority of the explanation that I shall give of the holy endowment I shall take from his words for they are great and his words compensate for the weakness of my own writing. 24. And the brother of Jared watched by the power of the Spirit, as Adam and Eve were given the endowment, and taught the way in which they should present it to their children, and this according to his words that are written. 25. And I saw the holy endowment that was prepared from the foundation of the world to give to the children of Adam the opportunity to learn the things that they cannot see beyond the veil that has been placed over their minds through the effects of mortality. 26. And they received these things by the mouth of Jehovah, who had been given the authority to teach these things unto them by the Father. And Jehovah said unto them, 27. And ye shall build houses of learning, and instruction for thy children, that they may have a place dedicated to the learning of the plan that the Father hath given unto them. 28. Inasmuch as ye were created by the Father, and formed from element, and given intelligence in this form, even so ye shall teach this to your children, by the symbolic ordinance of washing. For of the eternal elements of which water is a part, ye were created. 29. And ye shall wash them in a manner that is archetypal of the creation of their spirit form, starting from their head and washing to their feet. Behold, ye shall do this as a preparatory stage that prepareth them to receive an opportunity to become as the Father is, even an eternal God, who ruleth and reigneth in his own kingdom for ever. 30. And then ye shall anoint them with oil to become kings and queens unto the Most High God. And only an oil which hath been consecrated for this purpose shall ye use. For behold, this oil is not of the eternal elements, but is processed by the works of the hands of men, which symbolically representeth that no man or woman shall become a god or a goddess like unto the Father, except it be through the works of their own hands. Nevertheless, all have been created as spirits, which is from eternal element that no man hath touched. 31. And this oil shall be processed from the olive tree, which is a symbol of peace and purity, 
and it shall be pure olive oil, and shall be forbidden from mixtures of any other type, thus maintaining its purity that symbolizeth righteousness. 32. And this washing shall be sealed upon the head of him who shall receive it, thus symbolizing that all have been created as spirits, and given the agency to act in the sphere of their own consciousness, and are responsible for their own choices. 33. But the anointing with oil shall only be confirmed upon their head, and shall not be sealed. For behold, though the ability to become as the Father is given to them, or in other words, confirmed upon them, they are not sealed unto this end, and shall not see the sealing of this confirmation, except it be by their righteous works and desires. 34. And after they have been washed and anointed, ye shall place a garment upon them, which symbolizes the receiving of a body of flesh and bone. In other words, it representeth their entrance into mortality. 35. Ye shall explain unto them, and give them a commandment to wear this garment throughout the remainder of their lives, representing the fact that they will have their mortal body all the days of their probation. 36. Ye shall explain to them that if they do not defile this garment, or in other words, if they do not defile their body by disobeying the covenant that they make in obeying the law of the gospel, then they shall be protected against the power of Satan until they finish the days of their probation. 37. And ye shall give unto them a new name, and command them that they should always remember it, but that they should never reveal it to any other person for the rest of their mortal lives. And this new name shall be the name of a righteous person who is still in the spirit world, or who hath lived through mortality and hath returned to the spirit world. 38. And this new name is symbolic of their spirit existence, which they cannot remember in mortality, a veil of forgetfulness being placed upon them by cause of the functions of their mortal bodies. Thus the reason why it is never revealed during their lifetime. It is a name that they were symbolically called by in the pre-existence before they entered mortality. Nevertheless, it is not important that they be given the actual name that they have received from their eternal mother, for it is from her that they received it, but a name of a righteous spirit will suffice for the representation of their spirit existence. 39. And this name, as well as all the other names that shall be given in this endowment, representeth the actions, desires, and responsibilities of the individual who is receiving this endowment according to the name that they shall be instructed to use at the appropriate time. 40. In other words, their new name is a symbolic representation of their works in the spirit world before they entered mortality, and ye shall instruct them to use their own given name, as it shall be explained unto you, which representeth their actions, desires, and responsibilities, or in other words, their works in mortality. For this name was given unto them during the days of their probation, and thus ye shall instruct them. 41. Ye shall give a brief introduction to them about the endowment and its purpose, and this introduction shall be symbolic of the great counsel that the Father called in his kingdom wherein he presented the plan of salvation unto all of his spirit children. And ye shall give all of those who would receive the endowment the solemn choice to proceed with the presentation of the endowment or withdraw, thus symbolizing the law of free agency afforded to all the children of God. 42. Ye shall call those who shall help you present this endowment to your children. And these shall play the parts representative of the Father and all those who have a part in the presentation and fulfillment of the plan of salvation that the Father presented unto them as spirits in his kingdom. 43. And as all the spirit children of God were shown the plan of the Father and witnessed the mystery of his work and his glory, so shall ye present the endowment unto your children in a like manner. 44. Ye shall show unto them the creation of the world, and show the stages in which the Father caused to be created the world on which they live. 45. Ye shall present unto them the creation of their world, to show that each of them participated in the decisions that were made pertaining unto the world where they would pass through the days of their probation. 
Yea, ye shall call upon one to play the part of Michael, who representeth all of the children of God in their spirit form. For thus ye shall call Michael, who was known in the spirit world as such, but who became the man Adam when he entered mortality. 46. And now I, Moroni, would that ye should understand that this is an important part of the mysteries of God. Yea, even that we all participated in the formation of the world on which we live. 47. Behold, I have already given unto you an explanation of the laws of heaven pertaining unto our freedom to choose for ourselves and act according to the dictates of our own conscience. And it is requisite of this law that we all be in one accord with the laws that we covenant to obey. 48. And for this reason Lucifer presented his opinion, saying, And if by using our agency we choose to live by other laws of our own choosing, are we not then bound by these laws that we have chosen for ourselves, and not by the laws that have been chosen for us by others? 49. Behold, truly he did understand the laws of heaven, and used them accordingly to seek his own glory. 50. And because of this law, it was a requirement that each of us agree to the way and means whereby we would be tried and tested during the days of our probation. Therefore it was requisite that we be involved in the organization of the world on which we live. 51. Though we do not have the power to command the elements as doth the Father, we have the right to voice our opinion on how his command and power should be used for the purposes of our own happiness. And in this way our God is our servant for ever, as I have previously explained it unto you. 52. And just as the Father gave us the privilege to discuss among ourselves whether or not the plan of Lucifer was what we wanted for ourselves, so does the Father allow us to create our own world within the parameters of the eternal laws to which he is subjected by the power that hath been given unto him by and through this celestial glory. 53. And this is the reason why the endowment is presented in the way that it is in the beginning. Even that God commandeth Jehovah, who is the overseer of his will, and assureth that the eternal laws are abided by, and Michael, who representeth all of us as spirits, to go out and organize a world on which we can live, according to the worlds that the Father had created before. 54. And during the course of this symbolic creation, it is imperative, according to the law of free agency, that Michael agreeeth with all the commands and instruction that Jehovah giveth unto him. 55. And it is also imperative that Jehovah repeateth the commands of the Father precisely as they are given unto him, thus showing the authority given unto Jehovah to do the will of the Father in all things. But in all these things, Michael, who symbolizeth each of us, must agree. 56. And now I will return to the explanation of the endowment as given in the vision of the brother of Jared. But before I return once again unto the words of the brother of Jared, the Spirit constraineth me to speak once again unto the church of Jesus Christ, or that church that is called after his name in the last days. 57. Behold, because of your ignorance which has been brought upon by your works, which are not the works based on the words of Christ, but are works based on the precepts and understanding of men, therefore ye have not the Holy Ghost to guide you. Yea, because of this ignorance ye present the holy endowment in a way that doth not follow the original purpose of its presentation. 58. Behold, ye do not understand the first token of the Aaronic priesthood, which hath been given unto you, and ye have interpolated it at a time in the presentation of the endowment where it is not intended to be. Yea, because ye have done these things, ye have corrupted its holy meaning. 59. This token is symbolic of the acceptance of the plan of salvation, and our acceptance of Jehovah as he who will present himself as a sacrifice, so that we might all be saved by his name, or in other words, by his works, thus this token being called the law of sacrifice. 60. And this token is that which was given to us as spirits in the kingdom of our Father. 61. For this purpose the token is symbolically given to those who receive it through the presentation of the endowment, 
by clasping the right hand and placing the joint of the thumb in between the first and second knuckles of the hand, demonstrating that it is received in a body without flesh and bone, the bone of the hand being the key, and the thumb symbolizing the giving unto the participant a spirit body without bone present. 62. Behold, I have read the words of the brother of Jared, in which he describeth the endowment, and warneth those who would officiate in it, and present it to the children of men, that they do not change the manner in which the endowment is given, thus confusing the children of men, and corrupting the word of God. 63. And now I, Moroni, return once again to the words of the brother of Jared, concerning the continuation of the presentation of the endowment. 64. And after ye have given unto them this token, which ye shall call the first token of the lower priesthood, because it is administered unto all the children of men, and the offices of this lower priesthood, which I have suffered you to establish in my church, administereth to the needs and wants of all the children of men. Yea, after they have received this token, as I have described it unto you, ye shall give unto them the accompanying name, sign, and penalty. 65. The name of this token is the new name that ye were given as it was previously explained to you. In other words, that this token was given unto you when ye resided as spirits in the kingdom of the Father. 66. The sign is made by bringing the right arm to the square, the palm of the hand to the front, the fingers closed together, and the thumb extended. 67. Behold, this sign symbolizes the straight and narrow path which has been laid out for you from the foundation of the world, of which the square is indicative, and that this path is one of righteousness, of which the right arm is used to indicate this upon forming the square and that the palm is faced front, signifying that you have accepted the plan of the Father which is before you, or in front of you, and that you accept it by the uplifting of your hand. 68. The execution of the penalty of this token is represented by placing the thumb under the left ear, the palm of the hand down, and by drawing the thumb quickly across the throat to the right ear, and dropping the hand to the side. 69. The execution of the penalty is symbolic of the penalty of all those who do not accept the plan of the Father and the election of me as a saviour, who will give myself as a sacrifice for the children of men. The head representeth the kingdom of God, or the Godhead that resideth in that kingdom, and who presented the plan of salvation unto us. 70. The thumb being drawn quickly across the throat symbolizeth he who rejecteth the plan of the Father being cut off or severed from the head or from the kingdom of God. And this is the penalty that Lucifer and those that followed after him received from the Father, even that they were cut off from the Godhead forever. And this because they rejected or revealed, as it is presented symbolically, the law of sacrifice, which is the first token of the lower priesthood. 71. For behold, it is the authority of this lower priesthood, and those that fall under its authority to administer in the ordinance of sacrifice by cutting the throats of pure animals selected from among all others. And this sacrifice is also done in similitude of the first token that I have caused to be given unto you in the holy endowment, as I have just explained it unto you. 72. And after ye have given unto the participants the first token of the lower priesthood, ye shall present to them a representation of the Garden of Eden, in which the creation of your mortal bodies will be presented unto them by those who are examples of me and our Father. And after the world has been created in symbolic form, the Father shall go down with Jehovah into the earth that hath been formed and create a body for Michael, who, upon his entering the newly formed body, shall be known as Adam, and ye shall give unto them a brief description in the form of an archetype regarding your experience in the Garden of Eden. 73. Ye shall show the innocent state in which ye resided in the Garden of Eden, and show unto them that ye still had a knowledge of the Father, and the world from whence ye came. Nevertheless ye shall not divulge any portion of the truth regarding the actual way in which Eve was tempted, and lost her power over death, and was cast out of the Garden of Eden, 
For behold, these things shall not be known by any man except it be unto those whom I choose to reveal these things. 74. Behold, in your innocence you transgress the laws of God, and you are not to be held accountable for that which he did not understand, having been deceived by the power of Satan. And if the children of men knew the truth regarding your expulsion from the Garden of Eden, then they would begin to blame all women for the problems of the world, and believe that because of them all is lost, thus blaming you, their first parents, for their own wickedness and sins. 75. Behold, it was necessary that Lucifer be allowed to tempt Eve in the manner that he did, that ye might know that which ye did not consider before. And because of these things, the plan of salvation, yea, even the plan of eternal happiness could proceed. 76. Behold, I would that ye should teach your children a representation that is symbolic of the plan that Lucifer presented in the kingdom of our father, which we rejected. Yea, teach them that the Garden of Eden is symbolic of this life with the Father, and that Lucifer is trying to entice the children of God to follow his plan according to his own desires of how this plan should be. 77. Teach the receiver of the endowment the ways in which Lucifer promised to possess the mortal bodies that ye shall provide for the spirits of the children of God, even with the enticements of the treasures and glories of the earth. And finally, have him cast out from the Garden of Eden, symbolically representing that he was cast out of the kingdom of God as a spirit being. 78. Then shall ye present cherubim and a flaming sword to guard the tree of life, which represented the veil placed over the minds of the children of men, so that they might live by faith, and so that they shall not remember, excepting they are wrought upon by the Holy Spirit, the place from whence they came, or the things which were taught unto them. 79. And ye shall teach your children that when they enter into mortality, the hardships and vicissitudes of life shall be for their own good. And Eve shall explain unto them the pain and sorrow in her conception, which is opposed to the joy that is felt by our eternal mothers, when they conceive and bring forth a spirit child in the kingdom of our Father. 80. And Adam shall explain unto them that the earth shall produce food and raiment, and like the manner in which they are produced in the kingdom of our Father, and that this food and raiment will not be given freely and without toil, but shall be provided by the earth only by the hardships that shall teach you and give you experience. 81. And this so that one day ye shall know the exceeding joy that those who reside in the kingdom of God experience. For behold, they do not toil, neither do they experience any hardships, because the food and raiment that brings them this joy will be freely provided for them for ever. 82. And in this state of mortality, Adam shall have a body that is much stronger than the body of Eve, and with this body he shall rule over her in righteousness. Nevertheless, this rule will only last through the days of your probation, and shall not continue in the kingdom of God. For behold, all are equal in the kingdom of God, and there is none that ruleth over another, every one having received the fullness of the kingdom of glory that they have chosen for themselves according to their desires of happiness. 83. And in mortality it will be expected of Adam to provide for the needs of Eve, this because she shall be engaged in a constant awareness of her children and their needs. And it must needs be that Adam be allowed to call upon the father for guidance and instruction, thus becoming the head over Eve, according to the commandments that I shall give unto him. 84. And Adam shall lead her in righteousness, covenanting before the father that he will do the will of the father in all things. And if he doeth the will of the father, then he will love his wife with all of his heart, and serve her for the remainder of his days. For this is the will of the Father. 85. And Eve shall be subjected to the will of her husband, as long as he is righteous before the Lord. But if he doeth not those things which the Lord shall command him, and beginneth to exercise unrighteous dominion over her, then she shall not be bound any longer to the covenant that she shall make with him. 86. Behold, the Father loveth our eternal mothers, yea, he loveth all those who have the power to create bodies for his children, 
and because of this power that the daughters of Eve shall possess, they shall be more compassionate and docile, even that they shall exhibit more of the attributes of their eternal mother than the sons of Adam exhibit of their eternal father. 87. And the glory of a woman shall one day be known by all the children of the father. Yea, they shall know that the woman hath infinitely more power than the power given unto many men. For what need do we think that our Father hath for those of us who shall take a body of a male in mortality? Could not the Father command his holy angels to bring forth children of the mortal bodies provided for the daughters of Eve? 88. And if this be the case, why doth he need a man to do his will? Behold, without a mortal woman it is impossible for any of the spirit children of the Father to gain their second estate, even the state of mortality. 89. And this shall be shown unto you, when the Father commandeth a chosen mortal woman to become my earthly mother. And is this woman in need of a man to bring to pass my mortal body? And in the same way could the Father provide all the mortal bodies necessary for all of his spirit children. Nevertheless he hath commanded the sons of Adam to care for their wives and hold them in high esteem, lest in their dishonour of them they lose their righteous reward, which is their strength over them in mortality. 90. And by following the commandments that I shall give unto you by way of my gospel, ye shall be taught the ways of righteousness, even the manner in which a husband shall treat his wife. End of chapter 10.